G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to have a look at a plane that has been superseded by several other aircraft. This is the F4J, and while the F4J used to reign pretty much supreme at this tier before the F14 was introduced, the F-14, the Mirage 2000, and several other jets such as the MiG-29 and F-16s, you know, just a little feature of the Apex Predators update, have come and taken the crown well and truly away from the F-4J's grasps. But uh, whilst this plane was, you know, some would say mediocre, others would say pretty good, this plane still remains somehow relevant in the meta of today's matchmaker. The F4J is still fairly competent, and today I'm going to take six AIM-7s and show you exactly what this plane can do. Of course, we do have several limitations. You are still an F4 Phantom. There's no outturning anyone. There's no, like, dogfights. It's very, very limited. And in fact, you are often going to find yourself very much in a position of, uh, of disadvantage. But the way you sort of win these engagements is you make sure that they never happen in the first place. And whilst that's easier said than done, because you do get occasions where your team just vanishes in front of you, or alternatively, you might put yourself in a situation and then find that you've got three or four enemies around you and no teammates. These situations do happen, and these are the situations that unfortunately the F4J is limited to avoiding. You really just cannot afford to find yourself in a situation like that because the chance of survival is quite low. But obviously, this plane does have plenty of aces up its sleeve. It's got a pulse doppler radar. It's got up to eight missiles. You can take six AIM 7s. You can take four AIM 9Gs. It's pretty decked out. And this plane is still supersonic. It is still, you know, you've got enough flares. You don't have very many, but you know, you have enough. Uh, this plane is a really, really good support fighter. And I think this is the ideal position for a plane uh, a couple of battle ratings below the top tier. The F4J is really good at being a support fighter simply because it carries a lot of missiles and it has just enough performance to get by. You know, you can still you know, pull a couple of turns that you need to, you can still give chase to some enemies. And of course, when you're fully down tiered, you still do have the advantage by quite a bit. And of course, we're going to explore all of that. So in this map, this is a sort of changed map. MiG Alley, as we used to call it, which is off to the right where the F-14 is sort of fighting, uh, and the MiG-29s are coming from sort of off in that distance. We used to call MiG Alley because the MiG-15s and the F-86 Sabres would meet there for epic dogfighting duels. And instead of epic dogfighting duels now, we have uh, basically computer combat where you, where you lock your radar, you send your missile, and off it goes. But you know what? That's okay. It's, it's good for a different reason. Uh, and we're going to have a look here at this MiG-29. It's looking super juicy. And he's... He's going to try his best to avoid that missile, but the AIM-7 is just too strong. MiG-23 is our next victim here. We're going to send one at 3 kilometers, and of course, 3 kilometers is an excellent range for this missile. The J-37 is next, and uh, we're going to go again. It's getting really, really dicey. We got a lot of kills in a very, very short period of time. Something has got to go up, and here we come, a MiG-29 at 6 kilometers. He's going to fire a radar missile. I'm going to fire a radar missile, and of course, the R-27 is just too much for me to bleed away. He's just got too much speed. And of course the R27 is probably the R27 ER, which is the really long extended range one with the long burn time. It's pretty fast and there's pretty much no way I'm gonna drain it of energy. So it's kind of bye bye me. Uh, but what happens when you're in a situation where you have plenty of teammates around you? In that case, I pretty much died without too much of a question because I basically pitched up for the J-37, bled so much energy that I couldn't get away from the missile, and uh, sort of fell victim, like I said, to a situation that I had put myself into. Well, the, the trick is you have a really, really, really strong time. Um, in fact, this case here, we are in a down tier, so it should be free reign. The F-4J is very, very strong in a down tier. You have to really, really watch yourself around F-4Js. Uh, but of course, you're not the only one at 11.3. The MiG-23s are there, um, and you've got plenty of other planes that can really show you up. So you have to be super careful. This MiG-23, however, isn't really paying attention and is so going to sort of stick nice and close to the ground and avoid the radar. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like that just sort of happened because the MiG-23 just, just flew low by, by chance. But you know what? I, I could just be tooting my own horn here. Um, the F-4EJ is also another plane at this battle rating that you have to really watch out for. Six kilometers. I'm going to try and out-joust this guy. He has a shorter range missile, but 
I feel like if I could just get the missile away before he can, uh, I will win. And it looks like he tried it there, uh, but failed miserably. Now the F-104, this is a 10.7. He's uh, he's not looking very good. So we're going to try and just see what's there. But it looks like this other F-104 is really trying to lay on the hurt here. He's sending away those missiles. I'm just going to sort of tap the flares. It's a German with 104G. I'm going to get out of the way of his flares and his guns. And that's about the only thing that I really can do with the F104. I, I can't, I can turn him, out turn him, but I'm going to bleed a fair bit of speed. The A7E there is looking kind of juicy, but I can't really focus my attention on him. Instead, I turn my pulse Doppler off and uh, sort of test my luck here with this AIM-7. And it turns out that it's going to pay off quite well because he's still fairly short distance away and the f-104 is really not that good at avoiding missiles it's a fairly heavy plane and of course even though i managed to miss the lock i think it's got uh, inertial navigation or something like that where it can kind of guess where the enemy is going to be if even if it loses the radar lock uh, which is really really cool and really handy uh, let me know in the comments section below especially you guys who have actually used the aim 7 that would be really cool Anyway, this F-104S is not looking very good. He's uh, a big fireball now, and the F-5 is next. He's too close. I'm too ambitious there. Um, I've misjudged the closure distance, but that's okay. He's pretty much going to be a ball of ash because he's got a J-35 behind him. That is really not going to end well. Um, now, next target here, either the F-5 or the F-5. Which one is it ever going to be? Well, one of the F-5s is now a ball of ash, and this one is about to be, if he's not careful... He's very, very slow. You can just see that he's really, really struggling. And I tried to use the helmet mounted display here. Um, I think it's bugged. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I just think it's got a problem with it. Um, I have never, ever managed to get a lock with it. I find that just the regular air combat maneuvering mode or ACM uh, is, is fine. Uh, now, 20 mils make short work of that guy. And that is really all there is to be said about him. I can potentially go around and get myself some more kills here. And this is sort of... Uh, not going to happen. The last one guy has decided to run off to his airfield, and that J-35 in front of me is going to be an absolute chad, or yeah, that J-35, or that J-35. They sort of come in dozens. They are going to just suicide into the airfield. So we're going to move on to the next one. Now, this particular match here is not quite a down tier, but we are sort of the more abundant type. The 11.3s are pretty damn abundant in this match. Uh, and this is kind of going to show you what you, you what you do sort of when you get caught in a in a dogfight. And the answer really, the short answer, is sort of run to your team and hope for the best because that's really all you can hope to achieve. Now, lovely, I I'm pretty sure that's the inertial in the navigation there on the MLA, absolutely roasting him a new one. And you can see that I have a target there selected on the radar, but I really want that one in front. So I'm going to turn the ACM on. Uh, hope that I can switch targets. I've had trouble with that in the past, uh, and it looks like it might be something juicy, uh, but now that I've committed to him and he's sort of, the tornado's too far in, it's just too close. So I'm just going to pitch up a little bit, try and get a little bit of distance from the tornado, hope that he doesn't fire a missile at me, and it looks like he fires a missile at a teammate instead. Uh, the 11 kilometer range here is plenty, uh, as long as the guy does not back down. I don't even know what it is, and I actually can't remember what it is based off this recording. There we go, SU-22, a lonely little boy going in for a, uh, a little bit of bombing. But luckily for him, he actually avoids the first missile. I'm just going to send the second one. The AIM-7s do not miss very often, and when they do, it's probably because the radar is a little bit funky. And now, this is one of the drawbacks, one of the small drawbacks here of the F-4J, and that's its radar. It doesn't really hold on to locks very close to the ground as well as the other planes. Uh, particularly the F-14. I don't know what it is, but the F-14 just has a really powerful radar. So our next candidate here is the F-4J, and I'm just trying to get a lock here. I know he's got sky flashes. The sky flashes are pretty good. Uh, they are like a slightly better maneuvering AIM-7E2, uh, but of course the AIM-7F has the range here. Now, whilst we both miss our missiles because we're both sort of maneuvering perfectly out of the way, um, I, we are in a dogfight of the uh, to the death here. Uh, and this F-4J, I don't actually know if he has more or less powerful engines, I'm pretty confident that he is chonkier, uh, but this MiG-21 is coming in to spoil the fun. I just have to pop a flare a couple of times. And of course, 
the MiG-20, well, the R-60 is, is terrified of flares. Now, I am in a situation where this can potentially get dicey, so I'm going to run away. I'm just going to put it in a straight line and give it to uh, whoever is coming straight at a head-on, and that looks like it's going to be the MiG-29. I think the MiG-29 is trying to do some funky maneuvering here. Uh, maybe he realizes that I'm a threat, tries at the last second, fails, and the J-7D is my next target. I'm going to try and energy trap this J7D. I'm fairly confident that he's got very low energy and I am very, very confidently, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm somewhat wrong, but he is fairly low and he has bled a lot of speed. He can still pitch up into me. There's no two ways about it. He's still very much a threat, but the J7D decides to turn in front of me and sort of throw the plane away. So he's just going to sort of do whatever, try and find the reversal on me. And here I go with the energy dogfighting. I've realized that now is my time to strike, but it looks like the J7 is trying to pitch up, trying to stay out of my way. Um, and then I just throw on the uh, the radar just for a bit of BM. The F5 is very much in control here and the J7 has nowhere left to go. So that's your answer. You stick to your teammates and you just try and rely on your teammates to either take the bait or try and, you know, use them as, use them as the bait, if you will. Ideally, not the perfect circumstance. You want to work with your team. You don't want to use them as, as cannon fodder. But if the time comes and your opponents really want, or your, your teammates really want a free kill, then you can always send them to you. Now, this is the last match. This is probably the most impressive match. We are here in a full up tier. Take a note of the MiG-29 in front of me. This is Thunderpants. He's a fellow War Thunder content creator. Uh, he's a pretty, pretty casual content creator, if I do say so myself. He streams every now and then. Um, and uploads the occasional montage. But uh, if you guys if you guys see him streaming, go and say hi. He's uh, busy dodging missiles at this point. So we're going to try and work with him. We're going to try and see if uh, one of us can be a bait, bit of bait and the other one can maybe be the guy that goes and gets the kills. And of course, this is very, very interchangeable. Uh, at the moment, we seem to be AIM-54 uh, AIM Phoenix bait, uh, but that's okay. We can really easily make that work because the Phoenixes are not particularly good missiles if you have enough speed. Now, this F-14 is going to learn the hard way that the AIM-7 is the way to go. You don't go with those AIM-54s. You go with the AIM-7s because that's exactly the damage that you do with them. We are still looking for targets, and there are a couple that seem to be popping off to the right, uh, and these are the guys that might be a big threat, because once we're done cleaning up the sort of dribs and drabs of what's left, these guys are the ones that will swoop in and come and collect you. So having someone up high is really, really good. You can very, very easily use that as a, as a bit of a cleanup job, and being the cleanup man is good fun anyway, because you get lots of kills and save your teammates. This particular F-14 is, uh, again, meeting his maker. A 10-kilometer range, especially in a head-on, is extremely good. I would say that that is the ideal range for long-end combat. Uh, for sort of mid to short-range combat, I probably wouldn't put it as low as about f uh, 3 kilometers. I think you're pushing it. Um, but of course, in a tailed end pursuit, uh, maybe 2 kilometers could be another workable uh, thing. So our next opponent's here, looking very juicy, F-4J. We're going to send it down towards him. Uh, you've got to keep in mind that there is another F4J, and there's still someone behind me, so I've got to be careful of that. Now, two kilometers is just too close. You can just see that I'm not, not even going to have the time, and the F4J is probably thinking the same thing. If I'd gone with the guns, I probably could have gotten the kill, uh, but this F16 has presented itself as the next target to move on to, and at three kilometers, this is undoubtedly going to hit, provided that we can maintain the lock, and there it goes. Four kills very, very easily. The F-14 is coming in. I'm going to make myself a very sort of thin profile towards him so he doesn't really have the chance to get the missile away. And there we go. We are now in a dogfight with an F-14, which we are inevitably going to lose, provided that we don't have a uh, teammate such as Thundee to try and sort of save us from that. Alternatively, the F-14 can be baited into an awkward position and I can reap the reward. So I have to turn off the Pulse Doppler two kilometers here. That might just be enough and it looks like it will. He gets set on fire and we have ourselves another potential... I said another potential kill. Thunderpants claims that and uh, I say rude in the comment section. So uh, the, the justice is done. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all fun banter. Trust me. Now, my ace is stolen, but my will to live on has not. 
And so we are going to come along with the F-16. Uh, another friendly decides to sort of buzzsaw my tail off. Uh, that's really nice of him. I, I don't know. I don't really know what happened. Uh, but either way, we have ourselves a nice little ace. So you can, you can get aces in this thing. You can do just fine. This is a very pleasant plane to fly. The AIM-7s are great. The radar is good enough. The performance is good enough. This plane is overall just good enough to be a support fighter at this tier. So by all means, absolutely enjoy this plane. It is a very, very lovely plane. But ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for watching the video all the way to the end. If you did, uh, comment in below RTX 4090 gang because uh, this was recorded on an RTX 4090. Um, I am indebted to you guys forever. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.